well. Now, there's already a debate around whether the host communities will be able to benefit from this sort of pledge that has been made today, but also the development around whether we need around the refugee camps and the communities they're settling in. Now I'm joined by Ms. Jacqueline Muna Musita, the Executive Director of Financial Sector Deepening Uganda, who should tell us about financial inclusion of the refugees and the host communities. First of all, what's your take on what just happened today? I think that the meeting today is a clear demonstration by government and the international community to start addressing issues around refugees and migration. This isn't only a Ugandan issue, it's a global issue. And so I think the fact that the UN Secretary General was here, several heads of state were here, and so much money has been pledged, clearly shows that the world is thinking about how to solve this problem here in Uganda in particular. But I think more importantly for the government of Uganda, this is reaffirmation that the policy that it has committed to, which is allowing refugees to come in and have rights, more than in other countries is a good one, not only for Uganda, but ultimately for the people that are coming in. It's not their fault that they are um, coming from situations of war. Mm -hmm. And so by Uganda being a leader, hopefully other countries in the region will also take note and see it is a collective responsibility. Okay, so 358 million has been pledged. There's already a lot of more money that has been injected in by donors. Are you What's your sense? Do you think that given our history as a country and a lot of talk around how we've been able to manage or mismanage uh, some of these monies that are given to us, are you confident that this money is actually going to do what has been given? By the way, some of it is coming in kind. It's, you know, either a road or drugs here and there. What's, your, what's the sense that you get from this? I think that there do need to be multiple approaches. I don't think it should be only money to the government. I do think the government needs to work in conjunction with different aid agencies, but also with the private sector to find solutions. It's government of Uganda that should lay the strategy and everyone else should support that. So I am in support of the different allocations, but ultimately refugees don't just need food. They don't ne just need uh, clothes they do need more and part of it is the infrastructure and Uganda doesn't have that infrastructure in the areas that refugees are coming in and so if support can be provided for infrastructure to helping support industrialization to helping support people that are subsistence farmers really grow crops but also grow through the value chain I think that's where the benefit of the money coming in will really be seen but we need to look at it as a long-term solution. We're not going to solve this problem in the next few years. And so we need to understand what it takes to really integrate refugee populations. Statistics say that people who are refugees often go into countries and stay between 10 and 17 years. So we need to be looking at this for the long-term integration of refugees into Uganda and how the Ugandan government can really support them mm -hmm. holistically in their survival now but in, more importantly, in their ec economic integration. Okay, now there are two ways to this, because uh, we were covering stories in different refugee camps, and host communities there are, some are very happy, because they're going to be benefiting from mm -hmm. some of the services, but others are wondering if they're actually citizens. Are, are we still citizens? They seem to think that the refugees are getting much more than they citizens are getting. How do you think government can be able to sort of have a financial inclusion of all, both the host communities and the refugees so that we don't have a situation where there's a collusion of sorts between the two. I do think as part of government strategy, integration of refugees is really important. Host communities should not feel that they're being sidelined mm -hmm. for refugees. They should equally have access to services that refugees are getting. And I think the responsibility really is on government to develop the necessary infrastructure around health, around education, and other social services to make sure that rural populations that were in those places equally get access to services. And I don't, um, I think all of us are in a position where we don't want to see eventual, um, um, let's say, conflict of sorts internally because lo host communities aren't welcoming to refugees. So I do hope that government has, is continuing to work on that because I think that that is an important 
um, area that needs to be addressed, not only now, but for the future, because these people that are coming in now and that will continue to come in will be here for a very, very long time. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Jacqueline Muna Musita, who is Thank the you. Executive Director of Financial Sector Deepening Uganda. We, of course, we would have, would have loved to have you for a longer time because refugees are now part of us. Absolutely. But we'll definitely host you Thank another you. time. We'll make time for that. Thank you so much. And that was Muna Mus Jacqueline Musita, the Executive Director of Financial Sector Deepening Uganda.